Okay, so I don't want to talk to the mic because I want this to be a discussion. So we prepared some content for you and some topics to discuss. Uh, and in the end, I would love to if this was discussion. So I'm not sure how useful this will be for the recording. Okay, so why we are here? Uh, so we have uh, like containers for some time and they have they've been integrated into Fedora infrastructure so we have build system we have registry we have package review process or like container review process and they are all there and like the reason for this workshop is uh, how to improve it what can we do better which parts of the infrastructure we can improve or change or swap or whatever uh, that's one thing uh, but for that we need one person and that is Clement Verna, but he's not here right now because they are having infrastructure planning meeting or something like that, but he will join later. Uh, so Clement is actually uh, the person who is maintaining the Fedora build system for container images and he's been working for on it for past six months. Uh, and he put plenty of ideas into the Etherpad, uh, like what can we discuss today or uh, like what can we plan for and one of the most important things of those is the creation of the new container sig within fedora so the way this worked in fedora is that there was atomic working group and atomic working group for covering fedora atomic host and also uh, container build system and containers themselves uh, but it was working like best effort so so some issues were left open for a uh, long time, some so or not. Uh, but recently, uh, as you heard, there is this new thing, Fedora Core OS. So, so the current state is that we'll have new SIG just for containers uh, and we'll talk about Fedora build system uh, and like how, how to make it better. And then there will be other SIG uh, for Fedora Core OS. So, yeah, we could definitely talk, ab or we will talk about it as uh, Ans Clements get here, uh, about the SIG itself, like who wants to be in it, what we'll be working on, which issues from the Atomic Working Room will move to the container SIG. Uh, okay, so that's one thing to discuss. Uh, the other thing is that uh, probably one of the reasons I started this uh, workshop was that our team was working on uh, automation of the container delivery process internally so the thing is that internally we are using a lot of different tools to uh, build and release container images than they're in Fedora uh, mainly the last part and our team was working on like automating it as much as possible uh, it's still not done but we already have some results and some tools and we would love to uh, also use these tools within Fedora uh, so we definitely want to discuss that. Uh, the main issue is that uh, not all of them are open source because they are really closely tied to the internal infrastructure, uh, but it shouldn't be such a problem to add support for Fedora like FedMessage or Bodhi and others. Uh, but the core parts are open source, so we can definitely show those and talk about those. This other part to discuss. And obviously, since we have much more people right now here, uh, we can also discuss things you are interested in. So this was just like this interpret is this was just our ideas what we can talk about. That, but I, I'm assuming that you guys have much more, so we can totally discuss those. So I already do did in introduction. Uh, I'm not sure if we want to like introduce everyone. Uh, if everyone want to introduce themselves, since we already have quite a few people. Okay. So if you want to look at the text, maybe sit closer <laughs> to the... <laughs> uh, okay, so it's control plus, right? Okay. Yeah, so, so the URL is... Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll copy it if you want to open it yourself. Yeah, so this is the URL of the Etherpad. Feel free to put anything inside. Please just, just don't in erase it all. <laughs> That's the only source of the information in here. Okay, so 
Oh, come on, I have mic in my hand. <laughs> uh, okay, so I already introduced the session, our team. I'm not sure if we want to introduce each, our, each of us, probably not really. Or if anyone wants to introduce themselves and uh, have any idea what we can do here right now, now's the time. Okay. Pardon? Yeah, he will come. So they have the infrastructure planning and he said that he'll be late, but he'll definitely come. Uh, okay, so we covered that. Okay, so as, and as soon as comment come, we'll talk about the container SIG. Uh, so I guess that we can start talking about the automation we've been working on. Uh, so, so we are actually work, working for Steph Walter, and I'm assuming that you already seen Steph and attended some of his talks about automation and bots and uh, other things. So, uh, since we are working on him, we are uh, trying to follow his philosophy. And the way we approach the automation near Tenali is that uh, we created bots and like uh, real bots. So they have even names, they have personalities, and they have usually like one task to do and they try to do it well and uh, yeah as I said right now they are mostly tied to the internal infrastructure uh, but we can definitely make it work with in Fedora so our team which is actually in the first row that's Dominica and Irka so they already try to do it uh, but I guess that we can introduce the bots themselves uh, okay, so we already assigned tasks like who will be doing what. Uh, so I can start like mine is first, then Dominica, Irka, and uh, yeah, and mine is last as well. Okay, so we internally, uh, what we decided, li like the thing is with the automation, is that you can automate things, but you still need humans to help you with the automation. Like uh, computers can't do anything; they are still there's still need for humans, so that's good for us. Uh, and the thing is, like, how will bot interact with humans? So usually that's email, right? Uh, but that's not interactive, like, usually you need to put some input. So luckily, uh, Dominic's team, which is OSCI, they've been working on deploying Pegger uh, on top of this Git internally as well, so it works pretty much the same way as in Fedora. And we decided that pull requests would be the centerpiece of the interaction between bots and humans. Uh, so, so our bots actually interact with pull requests. So for example, whenever, uh, yeah, so whenever there is a new commit, uh, like one bot can easily cr initiate a scratch build of the container image and see like if the commit is sane and if it not, uh, it would report back to the pull request that, hey, uh, scratch build doesn't succeed. Or, for example, the Docker file has issues or whatever else. So, ju just to give you an example, uh, I created a pull request for one of my containers uh, in Fedora, and this is how it looks. So, so yeah, the idea is that this sh this could be the centerpiece of uh, like of the collaboration between uh, the automation system and and humans. Yeah, so it's very simple. I just added one more package into the uh, tools container image. So any ideas here? Like, is this good idea? Is this bad? Pardon, I I don't follow. I think that makes sense. Uh, okay, yeah. So. Uh, okay, so Dusty agrees. We are good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is the premise pretty much that uh, we have modern workflow for development of software. So we have Git. Uh, we can take advantage of the multiple remotes. We can do forks and we can do pull requests. And this is how we can collaborate. Uh, so this is what we actually start building from. And then we have Nextbot. Uh, his name is Dravomil. So for those of you who are who have Slavic ancestors, you probably know what the name means. And for the others, it's actually Zdravomil could be translated as like person who loves healthiness. 
uh, and Zdravomil is a bot which uh, links Docker files. And Dominika, do you want to talk some more about it? Uh, let me see. <laughs> okay, so Zdravomil, as, as Tomáš said, is someone who likes health, and uh, he uh, looks at uh, all changes in. Uh, in this git. So when talking about F Fedora, uh, it's not implemented yet in Fedora, as Tomer said, but uh, in the future, uh, it, it may be a matter of weeks. I, I think that we would be able to do it uh, now so it could work in Fedora. Only thing we, we have to do is uh, link it to FedMessage and listen for new, uh, I think, uh, new pull requests in pager on a new commit uh, commit on uh, pager, so that can be trigger for Zdravomil. It should be really easy to configure. Then uh, Zdravomil runs linters uh, using Colin. Uh, yes. Okay, so I, I don't have it installed, but uh, I can sh I can show it. So if you keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just uh, look at it and don't listen to me. That it's okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad. No, uh, no. This is uh, so. Uh, we've uh, we've created a, s a rule set uh, that it is sets of rule uh, that are important for images, uh, including uh, best practices and and also required uh, labels and and stuff from OSBS and. Um, uh, Colin, that's actually heart of Zdravomil. That Zdravomil is just a just a wrapper above Colin. Uh, Colin uh, looks at the, the Docker file and sees what is wrong. And when he sees something wrong, he actually sends email to a maintainer or or the the creator of the of the pull request. Uh, so, or now it is uh, the the uh, commit creator, but. Yes, well, in the, in the future it will be also possible to configure it so you can uh, add uh, another uh, person's and emails or RC channels where Zramomil can send notifications about the results. And we were actually really successful with, uh, with the runs. We had some thousands of runs in a month, so I think that's quite great. Okay, do you have it? Can I finish? I, I have it in my, in my uh, notebook, but... Yeah, okay, so Okay. Yeah, my, my environment is broken, sorry. I have here a Docker file, um, or do I? Just, uh, just an empty file, so we can see all the checks. And for the for Fedora, I run Colin. Oh. Is it okay? Yes. And you can see that all failed because we have an empty file. So these are all the checks I wanted to sh uh, show you for Fedora. Just a quick demo, so that's it for me. Okay, so any questions here? So I, I couldn't hear the question actually. Yes. Why does the um, Travel send email and not a comment to the For historical reasons, when uh, we were we started working on it internally, uh, we didn't have pager and we, there were no pull requests. So we started to react to commits and uh, actually uh, in the next week it will be react the reacting to new pull requests. You 
Uh, okay, so for uh, the question was about rules, like where they live and if th you can add your own. Uh, that's a really good question, and uh, so the answer, like answer, can be really long. So I'll try to uh, make it shorter. So, so what Colin is actually the project itself. It's uh, like the CLI tool plus API, and then uh, a bunch of checks. Like for example, checks for presence of labels, presence of files, presence of whatever else. And you can easily add your own checks. Uh, and then whenever you uh, run Colin, as Dominica showcased, she she typed Colin and then used rule set Fedora. And this is how we decided to like make the connection between checks and like what you want to run. So we call these things rule sets and rule sets contain list of rules and you can easily add your own rules. So for example, you can use existing code for checks and just like put different parameters to uh, check for presence of different files or labels. Uh, yeah, so this one thing. And the other thing is you asked about like how can you add your own so you can easily open a pull request against Colin project and add n your own checks. Uh, but the thing is that internally, this is not good enough right now, because we definitely want to have as much open source checks b as possible. But at the same time, uh, we have internal infrastructure. And we also try to check for internal things which are like they don't have any value in, in, in the open source project. So we want to have also like internal checks. So in the end, then we need to figure out how to take the open source thing, then the internal thing, and then glue it all together. And this is what we've been working on like very recently. And I'm planning to finish it like next week because we really need it actually from someone from your team so they can <laughs> contribute checks to checks to it. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah, Dennis? Uh, yeah, so do so, please. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've been working to adapt the script we have to publish the base image on registry.fp.ho, and hopefully we'll. So the the current tool that we use to generate the manifest list doesn't support the authentication method of our registry, so we have to work on that. Um, I'll try to work on that next week, and I hope by the end of this month we'll have uh, at least the base image for multi arch on the registry. Okay. Yeah, they are already in on Docker Hub, but it's using. Um, Actually, it doesn't even depend from Fedora Infra. I think it's another team that pushed those to, to the Docker Hub. We just ping them and they, they update them. And yeah. Yeah, but they ask, uh, from what I understood, they ask someone else to, to do it. Uh, um, I think also Mohan did a change and we started to. Um, the plan is to, to start to push the raw ID image every every day. The, the raw ad, raw ID base, base image on the registry every day, so you'll have a fresh raw ID image. <laughs> so the OSBS that is currently deployed in production support rebuild when the base image uh, change is not enabled yet. Uh, I can look at this also, but. Um, yeah, we have the latest OSBS in, f in uh, Fedora in production now, so uh, we uh, Atomic Reactor is 3.11, I think, now, so uh, I think some of the nice thing, I don't know if you uh, if you went through the new features, they are quite the nice thing where I think we can use is the automatic release bump, so we don't have to manage uh, the release uh, label in the Docker files. Uh, when you trigger a build, OSBS just take care, take care of it, so that's quite nice. Um, and then automatic rebuild when the base image is updated. Uh, I think that's like the two main features that we we can uh, we can try to enable um, soon. Um, um, yeah, yeah. I, I guess this. 
I guess the second one will be will be really handy when rebuilding images. You just push the new base image, and all of the yeah. large images will be rebuilt. Yeah. yeah. Then we can look at automating. So we're supposed to release new base image and uh, layered image every two weeks, but we haven't been really good at that. Uh, mostly because part of the time OSBS was broken and or we were busy with other things. So um, the idea is to try to automate that as much as possible and um, use um, a fed message to trigger the rebuild, the, the release. Um, we are we shouldn't be too far from having um, container updates in body also, so that will help uh, making the re the release uh, more. More friendly. Um, so I would like to. I know that uh, Jakub has been doing some work on Power PC 64 LE, but we are a bit short in in boxes in the infra. I think the plan was to reuse some of the builder of Power PC 64 because they would be discontinued. Yeah, they're going away in F29. Um, but I would like also to have ARCH uh, 64 for IoT. I think is the main is the main target. So that will come last, I guess. Um, I think they. Well, I'm not opposed to uh, have anything. It's just a matter of uh, priority, and I don't think we'll we will be able to deploy them all together and and resources. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so yeah, we might not have um, a lot of resources for uh, S390X. So. Intel and ARM, then uh, the mm. Yeah, I think, yeah. Well, in my head at least. And if people have over, over requests and think some, another arch is more important, yeah, just please tell me and I'm happy to accommodate. Um, another few thing, if we want to talk about, uh, do you do you have over uh, over project to show? Or no, or? Uh, not also. I, I guess we can finish yeah. the things cool. about the automation, and then we can talk about yeah. the container sig. Uh, okay, so. So yeah, th this was the first bot uh, for like checking healthiness of uh, Docker files or uh, actually uh, container images. Uh, then we have another bot which actually took a lot of time to do because it was not so trivial as we thought originally. Is that usually people have their uh, like container image sources in the upstream uh, and then they just pull it to downstream to Fedora, for example, or internally to Red Hat. Uh, and then try to build their quantum images from it, but still they uh, do all the hard work in the upstream in open source. So for that we have a bot named Betka, and Betka actually syncs the files from upstream to downstream. So Yurko, do you want to talk about it a little bit more? Since I don't have any demo. As I said, I don't have any demo. I, I could just maybe show you a readme from the private repository since you can't access it yourself. Who, who wants to see the readme? Nobody? Okay, so. Software collections, SCL org, has uh, their repositories on GitHub, I think. And yeah, we use Betka for that. Um, so it checks the um, I, uh, Betka configuration says what uh, like downstream repos repositories uh, wants to check or wants to be synced with upstream. And so it periodically checks the upstream repositories. And once it found some new commits, it makes a pull request in uh, Pegger. And I think it also sends some notification email that there is this pull request opened. Uh, and I think we are planning to change it to like using GitHub to fed message, so it uses notifications and not checking periodically the upstreams. 
and uh, so I think that's that's all. Yeah. So, so probably the more like the most tricky thing uh, tricky thing is to uh, is to actually like how do you configure this thing because uh, okay so you have some bot running inside the infrastructure and then you want people to be easily able to tell the bot that okay this is my upstream repo this is my downstream repo and for example this is some configuration which files should be copied uh, but how do you make the bot aware of this configuration without, without restarting it or something like that? And I, I don't think we actually figured it out yet. Could, uh, could the configuration be in the, this Git repo? Y yes, yes, it could. Uh, but still, like the bot needs to discover that configuration first. So it's like a chicken and egg problem. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, I, 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 I don't. I, I think all commits just get to go into that method. So you can skip it then. Then you have. It might be faster. It, th that's actually a really good idea. So, okay, so th there will be a message. Uh, like there's a new like new commit mm -hmm. and a specific file, but we will need to parse like every single message and um, like filter it somehow. Or Pygeo also sends. Uh, you can configure webhooks, mm -hmm. uh, on, so you can just send a, a message only on commits, and mm -hmm. then you can actually trim down. Because mm -hmm. I think for the message you can't. It's just like send. Mm -hmm. I think. But with webhooks you can choose. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it might not be. But but we but we will need to probably enable it for all the like container related uh, repositories. But these are really good ideas. We could check with uh, Pingu if we can have so like namespaced based webhooks or something like that for on Fed message. Yeah, sounds really good. Uh, and if you realize like how powerful powerful this is, like you can have your maintainers work on the upstream repository, and whenever they create a pull request upstream, they can easily you can easily sync it downstream and like try to integrate it into the distribution and see how it goes and basically report the results back to upstream, so they get feedback right away as they are working on a new feature or some, something like that. So uh, yeah, so this is something very interesting. And I'm really wondering if this is like also good for Fedora because, for example, as uh, Yurka talked about software collections, they actually have all, all of their images on their GitHub repository, uh, GitHub organization, and they even most of the repositories have spe uh, Docker files for Fedora. So, yeah, this could be really interesting. Yeah, so does this comment is uh, whether there is some like tooling or something like that to c create uh, container images out of modules? Uh, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I think it so. Like turn all the SCLs into, like each SCL into a module. Mm -hmm. So that instead of having like Python, uh, like Postgres 9, 5, 9, 6, mm -hmm. 9, 7 SCLs, you'd have uh, each one would be its own module and then you create containers based on those modules. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably have like two answers for that. So, uh, so yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> no. Uh, so back in the day, our team was actually working for modularity team. So like all three of us, and this was actually one of the cards we are trying to figure it out. How could we automatically generate Docker files or even images from modules? But we are not able to finish it or like complete it because the issue is metadata. You need to put all the metadata into module MD uh, and then generate Docker file out of it, which sounds kind of okay, but then you would have specific metadata to the container images, which would not be relevant for other artifacts. And we were not able to like come to a conclusion like how this metadata would be stored inside. So, so I mean, just adding, so, so for, for flat packs, we're act, you know, I, you know, we're actually we're just 
dumping the flatback metadata into the same modules for our three disk and saying we're building the module and we can get it right out of the same um, out, out of the out of the same disk repository because they're very closely tied together. And there there there's a decision that the module is specifically for the generation of the container artifact, which might be a bit different than the general case. So so you already have files inside the module disk gate which are related to flat packs? Yes. Uh huh. Wow. I mean, the, there's nothing in our configuration of OSDS that prevents you from building a container out of modules. Wow. <laughs> so we could directly create the containers from we could directly create the containers from the module of this gate. Yes, that's what that's yeah. what we're going to be saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Instruction too. So that's obviously one way to do it. Um, I mean, the other way is like you don't test the way I look at it is you know, could a can a module essentially be boiled down as just another you know young repo that you can pull files from, or pull hard games from? Because if it can, and I think it can, there is there is a sketch for for modules uh -huh. in the general container case as well. So you can so you, you can say you can create a container.yaml file in your disk that says this this container is built out of this module mm -hmm. and then a young repository will be generated and inserted into your document file as well. Mm -hmm. So that's but like take containers and flat packs completely out of there. If I have a module, essentially there's a Yum repo that gets created somewhere for that module so people can consume it, right? Mm -hmm. so that's if, if, if it is part of, if it is part of, there, there, if it is part of the module being added to the overall table, right. then yes, it will be put into the, the module. Yeah, yes, exactly. Anyway, uh, we are definitely not int uh, like not planning to do this. So, I like Dusty or others, if you are interested in doing this, you should probably reach out to Modularity team and maybe discuss with them because this was already on the plate, uh, but we just were not able to execute. So maybe this time around, when Owen figured out how to do this for flat packs, we could do it similarly for uh, container images as well. Yeah, but I think I mean also building cameras fedora at this point is certainly free to use modular content in those containers. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I actually wrote a blog post about that on Fedora magazine that it's actually really beneficial to use modules and specific versions inside container images. And then we could easily solve the problem that, hey, we have this container image, but what is the version of MySQL inside? So we can easily tag it. Uh, but we probably just need to do the final steps here. Uh, or maybe have the content actually, the modules themselves versioned. Okay, so what's next? Uh, 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 okay, so I won't spoil anything. So we have another bot, and I uh, actually spoiled already. So if you already have a pull request in Pegger, you can easily create a scratch build out of it, right? So Dom Dominica, want to talk about it a bit more? Actually, it was uh, kind of uh, inspired by Zdravomil. So Solonia now uh, can react on pull requests and com uh, changes in pull requests and create um, a scratch build. Uh, we had some problem with it, and uh, I think it will be a uh, result soon, because I don't know how it works in Fedora, but internally uh, we couldn't uh, trigger, uh, trigger scratch builds on, on forks. Because we don't have, we, we didn't have branch that would be like uh, usable from 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 building tools. So so we were actually uh, able to uh, push the change, uh, push people to make the change, so we can make builds on 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 forks, and it will be uh, updating uh, pull requests with flags uh, that will. Um, tell about the result of the of the world. That's it. Uh, since we have something similar for RPMs, there is some service listening and trying to do scratch builds in Koji. Uh, I'm not sure if we would be able to like unify it to have like single code base to do both. Uh, I, I don't know if any one of you know how how this works for RPMs. The code is precise, pretty much specific for RPM. It's using Fed package. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I, I did have, the look, uh, have a look because I wanted to do it <laughs> in, in Fedora, but it wasn't very trivial. But mm -hmm. we can we can take an overlook. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's worth it's worth like mm -hmm. getting the two code base and trying to, mm -hmm. to merge them. But mm -hmm. Uh, the Koji, um, I can't remember how it's called, it's Koji, Koji CI. Oh, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was called something like that, yeah, Koji well, CI or whatever. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. It's pretty specific to, to RPMs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe in the end it doesn't make sense to so merge them with just yeah. an idea. I think Finger wrote all that, Koji CI. So yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's what he said. So you could talk to him. Okay, so I'll write it down. I would hope that he did it in a way that is acceptable to other types. Mm. But you never know. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, next item, uh, which is almost the last one for the automation part, uh, and that's something how our bots are running actually. So they are. Uh, so I don't know, Dominica, you wanna talk about it or Yurko, uh, or sh should I? Go? Okay. Yeah, okay, um, okay. So so we have these bots, Travel Milbet, Castellania. And we have also this Ucho service, which rules them all. And so uh, they, they usually react on some event, on some message bus. And this Ucho, which is check word for uh, ear, yeah, yeah. Uh, listens on this message bus and submits a task for these bots. 
and it's that uh, the task it's uh, we use salary for that so the bots uh, listen on some queue and Ucho submits the task sends it into the queue and once the bots gets uh, takes it from the queue and uh, performs it and um, uh, that's basically it and uh, a home for our bots uh, I don't know what you meant with that so as you said they are mostly in our uh, private repositories I didn't write that. Uh, so I okay, didn't okay. So I didn't write it either. Framework. <laughs> <laughs> so metaphorically, I, I I see it as 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 a home. Like everyone has their own room in it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Yeah, and finally, we had also like a body, but we already spoke about it a little bit. I, I'm not sure we, if we covered it all. Uh, I know that Randy said that he would come, but he then said that he needs to go to the infrastructure thing. Uh, but what I was able to uh, uh, ask him in the meantime was that uh, like the support is already in Bodhi to be able to uh, release container images. Uh, yeah, so um, what we have, so the code is in Bodhi. Um, the Bodhi server is configured to be able to push to the uh, registry. Uh, Mohan created a, a release in staging for uh, F28 containers, I think. For like, uh, so we have all the Koji tags in place. We just need to to try. Uh, so I quickly tried last week, but obviously it didn't work. First, <laughs> first try it didn't work. So we need to investigate what's uh, what's blocking there. Might be simple or or not. Uh, There is one thing we, after it's more like um, a process, but we might want to try to think how we use body. Do we want to use it the same way as RPM? So, um, for example, maybe we let we need to have uh, lower requirements on Karma or thing like that. That might be too because most well, all our containers are using RPMs, so. Uh, it might make sense to have like a, a lower bit the gate for for and so, so and especially RPMs from stable repository, right? Yeah, 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 so. yeah that would make sense. Oh, and how about the two weeks rebuild? Like, how would we handle that? So, if we have this with um, in combination with um, automatic rebuild of the layer image. I would see that we would just rebuild the base image, maybe um, like every two weeks or weekly, and then OSBS should uh, rebuild all the layer image and create the the body updates. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, so, so some tooling would create the updates in both here, right? And even attach the builds inside. It would, it would be, yeah, it would be, it would be nice to have the to have that uh, mm -hmm. automated. Yeah. to use fed message also here yeah, maybe to to see whenever we got like when we have a new build for a container image from from osbs we could have like a service that just mm -hmm. listen fed message and and create the body update Okay, so that's probably all for the automation. So if you have any questions, you can address them. And if not, we can talk about the SIG. Um, so, but automation. Um, so currently, uh, the so the tools are open source, but the way to run them yeah, yeah, is yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. So. so I think once we have them, it's a good opportunity to try to see how we can put them in, in Fedora Infra OpenShift. 
and there might be some good content for the SIG and people to get involved to help us to like um, um, deploy that in uh, in Fedora Infra, I think. Y yeah, that's a really great idea. I have one thing related to automation, I guess. Uh, not sure whether you solved it already because I missed the beginning. Uh, so the registry that is used for building, is it still a stable registry? Or I, I believe that it should be possible to use the candidate regist registry for that because that would speed up the development a lot even without the outer robots and stuff. And if you do, do it like internally, it's, it's working. We didn't talk about it. So. Okay, so maybe. <laughs> Open the ticket on the SIG. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's in the Atomic SIG. Yeah, we can move it to the container SIG. But I think yeah, it, uh, it's just a configuration configuration change in, in OSBS to do that. So, uh, yeah, we can agree to to change that. So, do we talk about the SIG, like uh, how how would it work? And it's probably now is the good time. There's yeah. probably as many people in the room <laughs> as possible. Yes. Sir. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a really great idea, Dusty. I'm not sure we need to pick uh, up this part because it can be a discussion, it will be a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there isn't much currently in the in the SIG because I, I think I um I think <laughs> yeah cool. I just created pretty much the wiki page and I didn't want to put any kind of uh, process or anything so I think it's nicer if we decide together what we want to do um, we have also a um, category on the new uh, discussion.fedoraproject.org um, where I try to put, I think uh, there are like currently two. There are currently two topics there, but um, I think it would be nice to use this instead of a uh, mailing list. Um, so this is the discourse app? Yeah, that's the discourse app. And you can log with your, you can log in with your uh, fast account, so you don't need to have an extra account or anything. Um, it's just a bit more friendly for people to, to use and um, like not buried as deep as mailing list. And so, um, so yeah, I started the thread on uh, IRC meeting. Um, I'm not a big fan of having uh, 20,000 meetings per week, so <laughs> um, I wanted to see what people think about having a meeting um, and what they f uh, and if we should have a meeting, um, what would be the um, 
the pace of it so monthly every two months or every week um, I think we had like few comments ab about like having it maybe every every two weeks at the beginning so it's not like we just don't meet and say oh I didn't have time to do anything <laughs> in, in one week so there is actually some progress to do um, after organization wise I think um, I created on, on Pagur a group so um, which I'm currently the only person in but I see I see this group as being the like or if you're interested to join the the SIG just join the, the group on Pagur and you have like access on the tickets and everything and that would be the um well we don't yeah well group members is there but um, so if people, we can actually do this to now if people are interested to to join the SIG and um, I can uh, I can add you to to the group and yeah we can I think what Dusty said is quite a good idea we can try to uh, to list so I started on on Pagur, I started to put some tickets we can maybe fill more tickets also on 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 what people actually want to uh, want to try to do and maybe what they think um, the um, how they think the container effort in Fedora should uh, should look like and um, um, that would be a good start I think <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no yeah. say yeah together I actually have one question for Dusty after he finishes writing. <laughs> uh, like, what's the future of uh, Atomic Working Group in Fedora? No, literally Atomic Working Group. Like, when it's gonna be like shut down and how and like what's gonna happen? Okay, so it's probably now the good time to start moving issues from Atomic Working Group to the other working groups. I know, do, do we want to do it? Yeah, we can also work on that. Okay. Do we still have container very big issues? Yeah, it sounds like a great. I mean, that, that was actually my original intention to sit around the round table, but there's just so many people that we wouldn't find one. So, what's the question about the atomic Yeah, like. Yeah, so um, the question is about the atomic working group and kind of what's the future there. Um, I think that the sooner that we basically start the container SIG, and obviously that's kind of what we're here today for, the better, um, mainly because we're not having regular meetings for the Atomic Working Group anymore, because we've started kind of working on the Fedora Core OS stuff. And Clement showed up to the Fedora Core OS meetings and was like, hey, are we interested in discussing containers here, like we did in the Atomic Working Group, or should do we think it's worth having our own you know, special interest group for containers, I personally think is, you know, in the best interest of, you know, the container space being healthy for people to be able to show up to something that is focused specifically on what they care about. Somebody might care about containers that 
cares nothing about an immutable operating system, right? Um, so that was one thing that we noticed in the Atomic Working Group was people would show up, we'd talk in a meeting for 45 minutes about something they didn't care about, or we wouldn't get around to a topic at all that they cared about. So, you know, they might not show up as much. So the recommendation was, you know, let's see if there's interest for a container SIG. And he put out an email and obviously got a lot of uh, responses back, which I was like, you know, super happy about. Um, so I, you know, I think obviously he's already made a repo, not the one we're looking at right now, um, but he's already made a repo where we can kind of organize a little bit and kind of choose, you know, if we want to do a weekly meeting or bi-weekly or something like that um, and a actually have people sign up there and we can organize that way. Um, on the container SIG um, group uh, repo, I just started a new issue that is like, hey, you know, uh, if you are interested in like being a part of this, you know, just add a comment here. That way it's really easy because like sometimes people come up to you and you're like, hey, I'd like to be involved in the group. Um, but like their name maps nothing to their FAST ID or something like that. And so if you just comment in here, you know exactly what their fast ID is. If you mouse over their name, it tells you what their name is, or at least what they'd prefer to be called in Fedora. So if you go to um, the container sig uh, slash container sig uh, pagger repo and just add a comment to issue number three, um, you know that lets Clement know you're interested. He knows your fast ID already. If you want to add a comment saying why you're interested, um, that might help too. Uh, but as far as migrating stuff away from like the Atomic Working Group issue tracker, um, I think he may have already had it up. But there's a bunch of issues labeled containers. Um, some of them are related to container runtimes. A lot of them are related to application containers. S some of them are related to like uh, governance, like you know guidelines and stuff like that. Probably half of these things could be just not migrated. I I'd probably encourage you to use some judgment. Um, I'm not sure, we could probably talk to Pingu and see if there's like an easy way to migrate a bunch of issues over. Um, I, there is? Okay. It's a get repo. Right, yeah. I didn't know if there'd be like some automated tooling or anything. Uh, we use the project to migrate from Pack. Uh huh. Yeah. And I think there is a PR open to copy from one packer repo to yeah, another. It's never been met because uh, we could look at that. Time. Cool. Yeah. So something like that might be useful um, if you want to go through individual tickets at some point. Um, we can do that. I mean, like we could do that today theoretically. I don't know if that's the best use of everybody's time here today or not. Um, so definitely open to ideas. Small comment. We yep. have this thing for four hours. Right. Well, yeah. I th well, it also depends. You know, if people are planning to stay here the whole time or go to another session, which I think. Oh, actually. Uh, yeah. I've, I've got another session or another thing at three thirty. Definitely. I'm not sure about this current time period. Um, but yeah. So. Uh, you can do it after coffee break, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That works. Yeah, yeah. If there is nothing else, it's maybe something to. Okay, cool. Um, is there anybody here today that's interested in the container SIG um, that, you know, <laughs> yeah, nice. Oh, that, like, you know, has a specific thing that they're looking to get out of it, right? Because, like, you know, not many people do things in open source without wanting something out of it. That's what makes it work. You are, by nature, selfish. You want to achieve a goal. This is why you are helping, right? Um, you know, I'd like to think everybody's you know, doing it out of the goodness of their own heart, but that doesn't last over time. <laughs> um, so, like, is there anybody here that, like, has a particular thing or a particular agenda they want to advance? Uh, we know Dennis wants multi-arch really hard, so we're, we're happy about that. Um, but is there any, uh, multi-arch for you too, okay. Um, but is there anybody here, like, you know, from the community, Chris? Gotcha. 
So we've got Christian here and he wants to uh, learn how to um, get some applications within Fedora that he cares about packaged in containers so that he can use them as containers, which is awesome. That's a great that's, reason. That's another thing I'm... But this might be a wider community thing, but I think uh, currently if you want to package a container, you have to be a packager. And oh, currently, yes. Yeah. yeah. And which is Which is... I think that was mostly because that was the easiest thing to implement, yeah. right? Which is not necessarily good because like somebody might be a great container packager that never and, did RPM uh, packaging, yeah. right? For example, well, if I take my case, <laughs> um, I much prefer doing uh, Docker files and like I would be much more interested in co packaging containers than the uh, RPMs, but it's just like a like personal interest. Right. I think it's maybe, so I know that now we can push to this Git using um, Fox and HTTP HTTPS, so um, it might be also a good a good well, time we, to. Can we actually do that? Now? Yeah, it's been deployed last week or so two like weeks before. If they do a fork and they make a commit locally and they want to push up, you to can do fork. a pull request now. Yeah, you nice. don't have to do it from a, like an over, a remote pull request. Yeah, you can use. Does, but it, you said over HTTPS, so it doesn't work yeah. with SSH key. You have to like push and then like log in with your FAS user on email user ID and password. I haven't tr tried that. Either way, so that's yeah. awesome because yeah, that's, you know, we had the we have the pull request model now, but mm. if you're not a packager, you can actually you do You can do it, pull requests now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure what's the user um, experience, but you can you can do pull requests as non-packager now, so. Nice. Uh, that's maybe one thing we want to do, or we want also to consider having um, like container maintainer or right yeah uh, so like the the takeaway from that is yeah. we may want to um we may want to lower the barrier to entry for con for people who want to do containers uh to not have to have them be in the packager group first uh so we make like a new um container -er group now that's a bad name but you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so th I think that'd be a great, you know, thing for the working group to pick up and like consider as an agenda they'd, l they'd like to push um, because I'm sure that's a barrier to entry for people. It's like, of course, I'd love to have this because like I already, you know, maybe the maintainer of said package that I want to use in a container you know, is a great maintainer for the RPM, but has no interest in running it as a container. So they're not going to, to do the work to like, you know, create a Docker file or whatever else for it. Um, but I would love to, but I'm not a packager, right? So like that would, that would be great. I, I, I'd love that. Uh, so as for SIG, do we also want to talk about today, about the time of the meeting? I think this is more, it will, it would be good to have like a wider um, like people that are not pre present there yeah. to, to have their input also. So, mm, yeah, yeah, that could probably easily be like a topic for for well, discourse. I would say for a first meeting, but that wouldn't make sense <laughs> necessarily. Would it? hey, we're gonna meet to m talk about when we're gonna meet, yeah. except when should we meet to do that? Yeah. Um, maybe it might be a good idea to appoint someone to organize the like initial meeting there from the people who are here. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we could so do a, a jump. Do we have a mailing list yet, or is it we just do we are just doing discourse? Or? So we have a mailing list, but I, I personally don't like to have to look at two different places to get information. Right. So I'm not opposed. We have the mailing list, so we can use it. But if it would be nice to have just like at least there is a clear message. We already right. have like the tickets in Pyre. So it would be, oh, you have to go and check in Packer, so you have to go and check in. Yeah, right, here, here would be my suggestion then, more or less, create an issue in Packer, we have a SIG mm -hmm. Packer now, and then draw attention to it from other places. Yeah. So like, if you have a mailing list, send out a message on the mailing list that says, hey, I wanna draw your attention to, mm -hmm. you know, helping us decide our meeting ta time, can you comment over in Packer? So yeah. don't have the, don't have the conversation on the mailing list, let's have the conversation over here. There's a single place for that. Um, and then like maybe even CC the Devel list. So people who haven't yet signed up for the container SIG mailing list also get that information, except both of those are funnels into the correct place to have the conversation. 
So that would be my suggestion. And you'll probably get a pretty good idea of when to have the first meeting. And then people can show up at the first meeting and say, this meeting time sucks, let's change it. Um, so I think that should work pretty well. well yeah, when is good, yeah. That's true. <laughs> so we should also probably start writing down all of these like guide not, not guidelines but best practices okay. like like we want to discuss on Pegger, not on mailing list or Discord. Yeah. Like what's the what's the reason for each of the service? Yeah. Yeah, that's something we're trying to work through in the Fedora Core S working group too, because like we have mailing list, we have discourse, um, we have Pagger. Um, you know, the kind of the guidelines that we are floating towards over there is uh, discourse is kind of like a forum so like to me that you know a user says hey I'm trying to do XYZ and I'm hitting a problem um, so like more user facing stuff um, and the pagger uh, tracker is more like hey you know should we change the root file system to XYZ, right? So like more design type stuff or like governance type stuff. And then the mailing list is like announcements or drawing your attention to something else. Where we can have discussions there, but um, you know, obviously people aren't as uh, interested in following mailing lists as much as they used to be. So like we're trying to explore different avenues for, for different things. I'm going to stop talking now.
crazy. Crazy kind of one of those things that's like an experiment. Like if it turns out to be bad, like we could reevaluate that in the future too, right? Um, yeah, it, it might it might make sense, might make sense to look like something bigger and then ghosting would not like you can have something like like send OS possible or something to come to repair it. You might have for like the open sheet and right to very nice stuff. I'm not sure about that because if the only issue that I had with it I thought it was moving the what you mentioned about the code that that was then I mean it's my eyes that was the eight. Right yeah. something on the wiki where it's not really, I don't think it's super right, so that might be a good thing. Like, to like, to do like, that. Like, for, like for me, it's even you know, for a conference, it is the goal, it's the open shift, and I would like to see open shift in streams, or I, I would switch to open shift and possibly to uh, the upstream yeah. open shift, so we can make our containers more discoverable by all this, so we can write applications and use our containers. So the first, the first, the first yeah. chapter, like Fedora containers, is it's very vague and we could have like some or we could also have like some specific like different objective like maybe a bit more as you said common like open shift and other things I think it's it, it can make sense to have like people inside the sync that have different interests and that also have like some smaller group of interests inside the sync. So maybe some people are just there to talk about the container, the Docker package, the guidelines, and like yeah. more like platform uh, labels and stuff like this. And some would be like okay, grouping together to actually package a uh, big application. And I think that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that would be impossible to do. I would, I would also like to have uh, in the SIG uh, the opportunity for people to do work, uh, to help me in the impact, but also to do work like, with uh, boats and try to deploy uh, the boats. It would be nice to. Yeah, and actually, it also might be like, interesting for everyone, like, the task of the SIG, like, for example, like, for, for you and me, uh, to be able to go around on our own. I think there, there is definitely a lot of uh, potential and like, a lot of ideas to them. Pagel is there to add tickets and um, then we try to find the uh, uh, momentum and like try to try to get like more people. Like, more people. So do we want to discuss like the focus of the working group in detail and maybe the responsibility or is it just like out of scope? I think we might be able to like to say something, for example for Pesco and others to like get involved so that you might understand like if, if there are some like crazy big problems with some security issues in the containers, if we are involved then they will go to some higher asking for help. I think it's, it's good for like the external Something like this. 
question about the point of tolerance. We have, we have some guidelines, guidelines but uh, it might be good to review them and adapt them. I think the first thing is that I often uh, was it the guidelines that change in the, in the way we really need complain about it. Actually, I'm going to review myself now. I probably will amend in between because there is there there there, there is missing the last set which is requesting the report and which is not good. Okay. Yeah, I think it'd be good in general for the working group to have like some sort of stated focus in the goal. Yeah. Um obviously the goal of making it easy to So one thing actually I wanted to discuss is that uh, you are probably aware of the repository which is project atomic slash container image label something like very long repository name and it's the home of like definitions of labels like what labels should be put on uh, images but unfortunately it's not maintained anymore pretty much I mean I open an issue and sit there for months and no one responds. Uh, so as far as I remember, originally, or, or the last main turn was supposed to be our own weight count. Uh, but so yeah, my question is like, what do we do about it? Like, do we still follow that repository with uh, guidelines for labels or do we just like? I think we have in the wiki of the guidelines, we have uh, something different there. So I expect that people are going to be following that. Yeah, I agree. So, so it's definitely not up to date. 
because for example this repository suggests to use some labels uh, related to OpenShift but OpenShift doesn't consume them anymore so they are like deprecated uh, or sh even should not be used because users might get like idea that OpenShift will consume it but it will not so it could be even harmful uh, so yeah so I opened a bunch of issues and no one responded so I think that like this repository is no longer maintained and we should probably figure out what to do about it Coming back to the bots you have, there is, a, there is one that's the, the one with the link in the yeah, thing yeah, of yes. the I think that's it, that should be the atomic source of, uh, mm -hmm. of information about the label and maybe, maybe even have them removed from the guidelines and mm -hmm. just have this, this maintaining the tool. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you have an easy access for people to just check which, which label they should have. If it can be in the tool, I think it's the best. My, my personal opinion is that it's the best, best place for, for yeah. having it. There's some, like, some file with rules and to be implemented like why it's wrong, why it's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, the same question sort of goes for the container images, container image template repo. Um, is this up to date? Is, it, is this the source you should use to, to make container images? Um, because there are some container, container definitions in the container images uh, organization on GitHub. Should we move this to, to, to Kagur? Should it stay where it is? Um, there's, for example, in Docker and Postfix that uh, do some just go and connect. Sounds like the modularity. I think it would yeah. be used to the modularity effort. What happens to this, this organization? Yeah, th that's a good question. So this, that organization is actually from our team and we developed images when we were working for modularity and that, that was like proof of concept and it actually stayed as a proof of concept. So they're not supposed to be like production ready or anything like that. Even so, we have like tens of thousands of pools on Docker Hub. So and it actually works. Uh, yeah, so it's probably up to us to figure out what we want to do with it. So I think we should make clear where the canonical mm -hmm. source of the live, mm -hmm. and what the template is, if yeah. there is any template, then just, you know, uh, definitely keep this organization up to date or yeah. remove it that way. Yeah, okay. To not make any confusion. Yeah. I think we have a big opportunity here, which is, you know, there's a lot of confusion in the container world you know, all over the place as well as in our own container world within you know, the, the Red Hat Sinbox Fedora ecosystem. And if we could kind of get some sort of clarity and some sort of like real good on-ramp um, for users, I think a lot of people will start to do rather than you know, wading through a bunch of stuff that is either old or, or wrong or, I don't know. But I think, I think there's a big opportunity it's going to take some effort. So. Yeah, and just the thing, like, do all of us have time to execute this? Right. Probably the biggest question. I mean, if there is a bit fast, I can definitely spend an hour with you. Just, you know, slowly working through this. If there is a clear path forward, I think that would be good to find that and prove the methods. I think that's well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the end. Look, you have to the same job. Maybe couple, uh, like two, maybe three in that main objective, and try it because they are, they are all short of time and try maybe to focus the scene. Yeah. I, I try to like do like, okay, yeah. that's a very bigger problem. It's probably just focusing on my should be like generic goals that we all we want to support our users, we want to support our yeah. <laughs>
don't think I don't have that much time. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of work. So yeah. you, you won't be there. Yeah, I, I, I will be poking you in my interests, but I will probably will be able to be the right big generalist. So I think we already have a leader of the six, so it's really up to Clement whether <laughs> he's fine with it. <laughs> I don't think I can put in that much time to it. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's why I can do my best and get some money. So we are about 15 minutes till the coffee break. So I'm not sure what's your en energy level right now, whether we should go for coffee or... Uh, yeah. There's an opinion about coffee. Uh, again, I'm not sure whether it was discussed already, but there is this group in Central West that contains a pipeline for mm -hmm. to do something similar as you probably want to do it as well. I'm not sure whether there is possibility to somehow connect the forces, maybe even use the same system. Oh. But they don't use, well, or do they use OSB or something? Mm -hmm. They have open chip, but not OSB. I don't think they use OSB. You know, somehow, like, uh, I'm somehow connected to this. No, but I think it would be it's a great idea. It would be nice to share the network. It would be useful. Or something else. Is it possible? Yeah. So, Honzo, what was the name of the group? It's the CCCP. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Centers Container Community Pipeline or Vice versa. <laughs> Yeah, they actually have a whole system of their own to like uh, build images from GitHub, then push to registry, yeah. validate them, or whatever. Maybe we focus on more like than just the distro images. Do you know what's making this system? I think they are categorized. Uh, uh, it, it should be visible from the container pipeline registry. It's uh, defined on GitHub. And I think from the comments, it should be visible. With We actually met with Bama. Uh, yes. Okay, so I guess that we can invite them for for this uh, meeting, and yeah, yeah. we'll see. It would be especially interesting for us. Like the part of our focus is to have the same like, user experience for the images built for Rails and Plus and etc. And it's a general goal for. So if you could use the same infrastructure behind, <laughs> it would be uh, much, older, much much easier for us. So do you want to volunteer for that? <laughs> I can try <laughs> talking to them. I'm not sure what, the, what are their plans. So. Especially when the disk git uh, repositories will be combined, it would be an easy way. Yeah. Yeah, and if this discussion, uh, would this be fun for uh, this, this? Like, is it already like, decided and uh, maybe even some idea for this emerging of this bit? Would it be tested, I think, mostly on the central side. And the only thing is the software that does the replication between the central side. I think 
think it was like 10 bucks or 10 bucks. And we tried out something and it doesn't might not be free <laughs> functional, but it could be something else. Okay, so anything else before the coffee break? Okay, so I guess let's go, let's go for coffee and uh, after the break we can probably look at the issues in the atomic VG and think about what we want to carry over to the container seat. Okay, thanks for coming so far.